Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Startup Sessions. Um, so the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that I wasn't um, here last week. Last week um, was our school half term, so I was busy having fun with my two little boys. Um, so the Startup Sessions took a week off. Um, but I'm back today and I'm chatting to you about um, how to grow your Facebook page and how to grow it without having to pay to play. Um, so if that is something um, that you are keen to do, um, and I know um, most of us are, um, then stick around and I will be giving you um, some top tips. And for those of you who stick around to the very end, whether you're watching live or in the replay, um, I will be giving you a bonus tip, which actually does involve a small investment in Facebook ads literally can just be a pound a couple of dollars um but it brings huge results it's totally worth it um so if you're interested in finding out more about that then stick about to the end um and i will share that bonus tip with you um so let's talk about facebook page growth there's a lot of frustration at the moment um people um getting frustrated with the algorithm um we're not seeing as much reach as we used to um you know our posts aren't being seen it feels sometimes like they're not being seen by anyone um and it feels really difficult um to grow our page pages um, and there's a lot of kind of um, rhetoric out there about you know almost feels like Facebook doesn't want us to grow our pages and they're trying to make it difficult um, the key thing to remember is that Facebook are a business and if they um, see you as a business then they expect you to pay to play because you know we're all businesses that's how business works um, that being said there are definitely ways that you can get tons of engagement and that you can go can grow your page without the need um, for investing tons in um, Facebook ads. Um, it's absolutely doable. And so um, I'm gonna share, you, share with you a few top tips. Before I do that, um, I just want to um, check that I am live. Um, and I'm, I'm doing this through BeLive. So I always like to actually open up the page um, because I don't fully trust Be Live to show me any comments and things. I think sometimes I do and sometimes I'm not convinced that they do. So I'm, I'm just going to um, check that I'm here. There I am. OK. So I'm going to keep that open um, so that I can see. Um, I'll pop back every now and then and just check for comments. <laughs> OK, so with that out further ado, let's dive in to tip number one. As always, if you've seen me live before, you'll know that I always have notes to the side. So you'll see me constantly glancing down here to make sure that I'm not um, missing anything. So my first tip um, is. Be clear on who you are and who you're for or who your page is for, should I say. Um, and so what do I mean by that is, um, you know, oftentimes I see businesses and I go onto Facebook pages and um, it's amazing how confusing it can sometimes be to work out by looking at the page what this business is and what they do. Sometimes when you're so in your own business, you forget that not everyone automatically knows what you do and you don't think to make it really, really obvious. The problem with that is if it isn't really, really obvious, people will just click away um, and they'll go somewhere else. Um, so you want to make sure that as soon as someone lands on your page, um, oh, hey, Lana, nice to see you, fab. Um, as soon as someone lands on your page, they can tell straight away what your page is about and who it's for. You need to get really clear on that. Um, so um, the ways that you can get that across are um, obviously the name of your page. Um, if you can get across, you know, who it's for and what it's about in your name, then brilliant. Um, um, without making a really, really kind of long and complicated name because you don't particularly want that either. Um, but a kind of nice, simple name that tells people, um, you know, what the page is about and who it's for is spot on. Um, if you're a local page, um, then often it's a really good um, strategy to include the name of the kind of locality that you're targeting um, in the name of your page as well, because again, um, that helps the people that you want to find your page um, find it more easily. Um, so think about the name of your page. Um, and if you've already named your page and you're thinking, oh no, I haven't done that, um, then I certainly don't want you to go rushing out and quickly and you know immediately changing the name of your page. 
but equally give it some thought um, and if you feel like a page name change um, would be helpful, then you can do that. Facebook allows you to change the name of your face of your page. Sometimes you have to do it in stages um, because um, one of Facebook's big things at the moment, hey, Eurasia, lovely to see you. Um, one of Facebook's big things at the moment is that they don't want to mislead people. Um, and so um, oftentimes when you try and change the name of your page, if you're changing it to anything too drastically different to what you have at the moment, Facebook may see that as you um, misleading people. Um, and so sometimes what you have to do is kind of change it gradually in stages until you finally get the actual name that you want. Um, but yes, so the name is a great way to tell people, obviously, what your page is about and who it's for. Um, your, um, you have three key images as well on your page that you can also use um, to immediately, there's nothing like an image to immediately tell people, you know, as soon as they land, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words, isn't it? What they say, an image speaks a thousand words. Um, and it's absolutely true. So make the most of those three images. You've got your profile picture, you've got your cover picture across the top, and then you've also got the option to add an image in the about section of your page. And I absolutely recommend that you make use of all of those images. Um, don't make it too busy. Again, sometimes I see like tons and tons and tons of images and like that can be a bit overwhelming, a bit confusing. You just want to make it nice and simple, nice and clean, nice and clear. Um, if you're a personal um, brand, then make sure one of those images is you because people want to connect with you. Um, even if you're not a personal brand, sometimes that can work really well because we like to see the people behind the business. Um, so whether it's a picture of your team, um, picture of you, um, even a picture of um, perhaps your customers or people who, um, you know, represent your customers, um, anything like that, that helps people to kind of connect with who you are, what you're doing, what your page is for, um, is going to work really well for you. Um, so you've got, so that's it, you've got your page name, um, your mm -hmm. images, um, and of course your content. The content itself needs to be um, clearly for the people that your page is for. So if you've got a page for mums, you want content that mums are going to want to read. Um, you want content that's for mums, um, and so on and so forth. Um, it it kind of you know makes sense, um, but it's not necessarily what we always think when we're so kind of deep in our own business. So um, it's worth saying, even if it sounds obvious. Okay, so that's tip number one. So making sure as soon as someone lands on your page, they know what your page is about and who it's for. And doing that through your page name, your images and your content. Point number two, tip number two, is to um, post a variety of content. So yes, um, for the most part, your page, you know, is there to promote your business, but that shouldn't mean that every post is about promoting your business because people will soon get bored um, and they'll soon lose interest. Um, people want value. People are on social media for entertainment, for education um, and to um, feel good about themselves um, to, and all of this stuff. And you should be providing that on your page. Um, so yes, you need to be promoting your business, but you also need to be providing people with a reason to stay. So you need to get, be giving value. So um, creating content that is going to give value and um, whatever that looks like in your particular in, um, industry. Um, so for example, for me, that's this. I'm going live and I'm posting um, a Facebook live on tips that are hopefully giving my audience a value because my audience um, is filled with people who are trying to start and grow an online business. Um, you need to um, provide entertainment. You need to engage people socially because that's another, I mean, let's face it, social media. People go on social media to be social, to interact, to have conversations to have discussions, um, they want to, you know, be able to express their feelings, their thoughts, their um, opinions, and so on and so forth. And so your page needs to give people a platform to do just that. And if you can do that, then that's when you start to see the engagement. That's when you start to see the followers go up because they can see that this is a page where, you know, things are going on, um, where they're going to get the content that they um, really want and, and can engage with. So um, examples might be, um, you know, funny, but, I mean, memes and things like that are always great for engagement. And if you're anything like me, when I first sort of started really kind of looking into um, kind of managing my Facebook page, 
I was a bit like, no, oh, I'm not sure memes. It's a bit like, bit naff. Um, you know, it almost felt like it was kind of beneath my business and that maybe it wasn't particularly professional. Now, that could have been my extreme corporate background um, talking, having come from, you know, a FTSE 30 company where everything was uber, uber corporate. The thought of posting silly um, memes and stuff initially felt a bit um, awkward. Um, but I have to say they are fab. And at the end of the day, you know, you're not corporate and I'm not corporate. I'm sat here in my pajamas, for goodness sake. Um, <laughs> I'm about as anti-corporate as it can be these days. Um, but that doesn't matter because I'm here to help people. I'm here to provide a bit of entertainment, a bit of value um, and, you know, build relationships with people. Um, and so if you find that your audience resonate with stuff like that, then post it, for goodness sake. Um, conversation starters. Um, and, you know, yes, conversation starters that relate to your industry, but also conversation starters that don't necessarily relate to your industry you know that allow you to get to know your audience better and vice versa um, so just silly conversation starters are allowed as well um, the big thing here is to test and experiment with tons of different types of content and you will start to see um, what different types of content your audience resonates with you with because it's different um, from business to business from industry to industry um, just this week, I have done Facebook audits on two different kind of mum related businesses. Um, one was a mum to mum um, kind of selling business uh, where they um, hold kind of local markets where mums can come and sort of buy and sell um, kid stuff. Um, and another was, um, oh, my mind's gone blank. What was it? Oh, a. Um, like a parenting um, page um, for um, parents to help people. Um, it had things like baby massage and um, all sorts of stuff. And um, it was interesting that both mum pages, um, but both clearly had slightly different audiences, different types of mum. Um, the the mum to mum market um, clearly really really resonated with the type of content, the kind of bad mum type of content. They you know or oh, can't wait till the kids are gone to bed and then I can have a gin type content. Um, and the, you know, the kind of funny mum fails type content and all of that kind of stuff. Those types of posts got really, really high engagement, tons of reactions, tons of comments and so on. Um, now the other page, yes, they like that stuff, but where the engagement really shot up on that page, it was more the kind of creative mum ideas, how to do things differently with your kids, fun ideas of, you know, different things you can do with your kids. And um, that's what they loved. And it just goes to show that just because you're a mum page doesn't mean to say that your content needs to be exactly the same as every mum page out there. Different pages have different little niches and different audiences who like different things. So test test with your audience ask them what they like test different types of content and you'll start to see what they you know what gets engagement what gets good reaction and what doesn't and if it falls flat then you know um so just keep testing okay so that's tip two um tip three um is kind of continuing this theme really and that is of really focusing um instead of the on the quantity of the you know we all tend to get a bit obsessed with the likes and so on on our pages but instead of that i urge you to focus on the engagement focus on building the engagement forget kind of the you know getting more likes and all of that kind of stuff that will come if you can build an engaged page that has value and variety and you know people interacting then the likes will come it will be a natural result of of, of all that work that you've done to get engagement. So how do you get engagement? Well, through that variety of content, through the testing, um, through posting things like conversation starters, thinking what do people engage with? Um, you know, where it, they engage, where you have invoked some kind of emotion. Um, you know, you can see the actual engagement buttons are all different emotions. So if you it makes sense that if you're posting stuff, that inspires some kind of emotion, you're probably going to get more um, engagement. Um, other ways to get engagement is not just to focus on um, 
where you can engage on your own page, but also to go and actually interact with other pages where your ideal clients, where your audience are already hanging out. Um, it can be competitors, but it doesn't have to be. It can be other related businesses. So for me, for example, um, as a business strategist, a business coach, I could perhaps go and hang out on um, web designers pages, copywriters, um, VAs, um, anyone who has a similar or you know the same type of audience as me. Um, if I go and interact on their page, um, then a number of things happen. Um, and by interacting, I mean going and commenting on their stuff, liking their stuff, sharing their stuff over, back over to my page. Um, <clears throat> all of these um, are a great way um, to help that page because let's face it, I'm giving you know you're giving them engagement um, and you're kind of improving things for them but what you're also doing is you're allowing another audience to see you and actually um, I only discovered this today so you may already know this but if someone um, on your own page likes your posts you can then invite them to like your page and you should absolutely be doing that but what I didn't realize until today um, is that if you go and post on someone else's page and they like your comment on that post you can also, if you're if you've posted as your page, um, <clears throat> then you can also invite those people to like your page. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, Lana, maybe I'll get you to check mine out sometime. Yes, absolutely. As you are a member of your business lounge, um, I'm happy to do your Facebook um, page order anytime. Um, okay. So yes, so interaction, focus on really building engagement on your own page and focus on how you can interact and engage with, on other pages where your ideal clients are hanging out. Um, and by doing that, you're not only um, creating a buzz and getting Facebook to show your page to more people, but you're also telling Facebook what type of audience you want to attract to your page because you're by the type of content that you're reacting to as your page and that you're sharing as your page, Facebook will take that <coughs> as an indication of who you are and who your page is and will know then um, who to show your page to. I hope that makes sense. And also any interactions that you get, any um, reactions that you get both on your page and on other people's pages, um, you can then invite to like your page. So those are my three tips. Now, if you were here at the start, um, I also promised you a bonus tip. Um, and this one isn't a free one, but it is a very, very, very cheap one. Um, and that is, and this is a fab one. Um, this is a tip I actually got um, from a fab woman called Rachel Peterson. Um, she is um, awesome, go check her out. And um, her tip is, and I've tried this, and it works really, really well, is to, Think about an influencer in your own industry. Um, <coughs> so for me, that's easy. It's any, you know, it would be someone like um, Marie Forleo, Neil Patel, um, Russell Brunson. There are tons of them. There are tons of them in my industry. Um, and um, but depending on what industry you are, there, there'll always be someone, someone that your your audience um, likes. You know, a lot of your audience follows already and likes already. Um, if you're not sure, if you can't think of one in your industry, let me know and I'll have a brainstorm with you. But um, generally speaking, um, so I mean, for example, I'm working with a client at the moment who is a, a mortgage broker. It's a local business and there aren't really many influences in the mortgage um, world. And so um, I actually, instead of thinking of an influencer, I thought of a kind of message that I thought um, people would like. Am I making sense here? Um, so people want to save money. And so I thought of an, influ an influencer um, in the kind of money world. Um, and I ended up doing a, um, what's his name? Robert Kiyosaki quote um, about, you know, um, managing your money wisely. Okay, so that's to give you an example of how it might work in another industry. And what you do is you create a quote um, with probably an image of that person um, on the on the quote so you've got an image of the person with their quote um you post it on your page and then you boost it for like a pound for a day it doesn't need to be you don't need to put a lot of money into this a pound two three pounds for 24 hours whatever you can afford it doesn't need to be a lot at all <clears throat> and then what the, the key here is that you're targeting the audience that you target when you do this is an audience of people who already like that 
person, that influence, influencer. Does that make sense? So say, for example, I'm doing this. Um, and if you go and look at my page, you'll see I've done this a few times. OK, so I perhaps I pick a Marie Forleo quote. OK, so I create my nice image, lovely picture of Marie Forleo, her quote. OK, and then I promote that image on Facebook to an audience of people. And you can do this in the audience insights in the Facebook ad manager of people where it says in the interest. If you type in Marie Forleo as an interest now they need to be big enough that they appear in the audience insights. Um, so if they don't appear, then try and pick someone who's big enough, who's got a big enough following, but they will appear. Marie Forleo is way big enough. Um, there's all sorts of people on there. Um, <clears throat> so you follow, you basically are targeting to people who like Marie Forleo. And once you've done that, what you will see is tons and tons of people liking that post because you're promoting it to an audience of people who like Marie Forleo. They see a quote from Marie Forleo, they're going to like it. And as soon as they like that post, you can then invite them to like your page. Boom. So what you know, you're doing, you know that you're attracting people who are your target market because you're picking an influencer related to your industry. So you're not just randomly inviting random people to like your page because we don't want that at all. You are being specific about the audience that you want, which is why you've chosen a specific influencer and a specific topic that relates to your industry. Um, and you know that these people like that person, and so a lot of them are gonna like the, like the post, and you can then just invite them to like your page. I hope this makes sense. Let me know if I'm not making sense. It's a great tactic. Um, it's, it's fab. Not everyone that you invite <clears throat> will like your page. In fact, I find prob probably only about one or two in every 20 or 30 like, but it's still a super cheap way to get um, quite a few likes in one go. So give it a try, give it a whirl. Um, those of you who are in your business lounge, if you want me to do a little tutorial on this, let me know and I'll do that over um, in the members um, Facebook page. And that's it. Um, that is my um, entire top tips. Now, before I go, if you struggle to come up with ideas, going back to my variety um, and the need to post variety, the need to get engagement, if you struggle with this and you're thinking, Colette, I get it, but I just can't think of enough stuff to post, I can't come up with the ideas, my mind goes blank, then I have help for you. Uh, so I have a um, cheat sheet, if you will, where I've created um, 21 different types of posts um, that you can try on your Facebook page um, and test to see what gets great engagement and what doesn't. Um, I'm going to post a link in the comments where you can sign up for that um, cheat sheet. And um, it's completely free, of course. Um, and go and take it and use it and test as you will. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. Do let me know. Um, let me have one last check for the comments. Um, in fact, let me transfer this link over now before I go so that I don't forget. <laughs> uh, here we go. I'm going to pop that. Oops. I'm going to pop that in the comments. Oh, I've frozen. I wonder if I can do it via the e live. I can hear my little one whispering to me. I told him he's just gone to bed. And I said, Are you going to manage to be quiet? And uh, I can hear him whispering. He's obviously fed up of being quiet, quite right too. Okay, so. Get your 21 posts here. Yeah. Okay, that link is now in the comments. Um, so do go and um, grab your copy there um, and let me know how you get on. Thanks to those of you who have joined me live. It's been really lovely to have you here. Um, it's always nice knowing that I'm not talking to myself. Um, if you're watching in the replay, let me know. Give me a hashtag replay uh, and so that I know that you watched it as well. And I shall see you next week. Now, next week, um, let me remind myself, I will be chatting about, where's my calendar? Uh, oh, yes, next week, I'm going to be chatting about three ways that you can make a sale today. 
um, because let's face it, we all struggle. I posted something the other day in the group. If you had to make £100 today, what would you do? Um, and I'm going to be answering that question for you um, in next week's startup sessions. And that's next Wednesday at the same time. So do come and join me. Um, and thanks to all of those of, you, those of you who've joined me tonight. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.